case. Thank you, Mr. Attorney General. Um, I'd love to talk to you about your uh, 2020 budget, but what is far more critical at President and it has much far re more reaching consequences to the credibility of our government is the prompt and full disclosure of the um, Mueller report. The current non-disclosure of that report has only worsened a pervasive distrust of government generally and of Mr. Mueller's investigation and your department's response to it specifically. This really started very early on in the investigation with excessive secrecy about exactly what we were taking a look at. Here is the supplemental uh, uh, memo from, uh, from the Deputy Acting Attorney General, and this is what drives the public crazy when they see something like this. This is what we have to try to avoid when we get into this. In your March uh, 24th, three and a half page summary of the report, you stated that you are, quote, mindful of the public interest in this matter and that you intend to release, quote, as much of the report as you can, consistent with applicable law, regulations, and department policies. You know, you know of course, that on March 14th, the House resolved unanimously, 420 to zero, all members of this committee and House voting, that the full report be released publicly, except where prohibited by law, and be released to Congress unconditionally. Do you appreciate the importance of a full disclosure of this report, both personally and on behalf of your department? I appreciate the importance of releasing as much of the uh, information in the report as I can consistent with the law. Okay, well, let's get into that then. What specific laws, regulations, and department policies, as you've cited in your letter, do you claim require or justify you to withhold portions of the report? You've already talked about 6E. Okay, what else? Well, as I said, there, there are four categories uh, of information that are being redacted. I, I understand that, sir. Okay, uh, first, and one of those categories... You ask what else? The other one is um, we've asked the intelligence community to identify any information that could reveal intelligence sources and methods. The okay, third, but what authority do you have uh, to, to, to state that you have discretion to rehold, withhold? I get the grand jury side. That's 6E. And by the way, you know as well as I do that 6E also encompasses an intelligence a committee exep exception. So I, I assume you're going to say that that falls under that category, uh, that, that there can be some release or withholding of intelligence-specific information under your 6E category. What about the other two categories? What justifies you in, in claiming the discretion to withhold that information? Well... Are you talking about the intelligence? Info? No, I'm talking about I'm talking about the other two categories. I'm talking about uh, ongoing prosecutions, but I'm particularly focused on privacy and reputational interests because it seems to me that that's an exception that you can just drive a truck through. So, I mean, you're the one that says you have the discretion to do that, and I'm asking you, where does your discretion lie? Where is your regulation? Authority? Because the regulation that uh, sets up the special counsel and also provides for his report to the Attorney General, and also what the Attorney General can release, specifies that it has to be consistent with the Department's uh, longstanding uh, policies. And the Department's longstanding policy uh, and practice is that if we're not going to charge someone, we, we don't go out and discuss the bad th bad or derogatory information about them. That's what got everyone outraged at what uh, FBI Director Comey did in the case of Hillary Clinton. Okay, so the regulation back to longstanding policy is what justifies that exception, right? In your, in your view? The, the regulation that says that any release has to be consistent with that. Okay, good. Um, let's go to 6E here for a second. Um, well, before I get to 6E, are you maintaining or will you maintain any right to withhold any of the information in that report based on a so-called claim of executive privilege? Am I what? Are you going to claim that you have a right to withhold any of that report based on a so-called claim of executive privilege? Well, the, any claim of executive privilege would have to be asserted by the president. And he, the and president. As I said, as I said in my letter, which sort of speaks for itself, uh, he has said that he's leaving the decisions up to me. Okay. Are you going to claim executive privilege to keep any of that report back? Uh, as I said, there's no plan. On, I have no plan to do that. Okay. Um, do you believe that executive privilege applies to any broader uh, range of communications and specific direct communications from the president? 
you know, I would, I would have to review the latest opinions from OLC about the precise scope of it, but it's not relevant to me right now. And as far as you know, does it apply to any uh, communications by the president uh, before he was president? As, as I say, uh, it, I, I'm not sure what the, t the learning is in the Department of Justice on that. Okay. Um, you're aware that um, uh, some of the ex that there are exceptions under 6E under which you can, in fact, uh, disclose grand jury uh, material. Some of those are within your discretion, but many of those are. Uh, subject to a ruling of a court, correct? What are they? Well, there's six, the six E, uh, there's five exceptions in six E uh, that allow you to go to court to ask the court for permission to release those. It's up to the court to decide whether to release. Are you intending uh, to go to court uh, to ask for guidance and or direction and or an order uh, where you are uncertain whether you can in fact release or should in fact release? materials. Oh, but the, I mean, the chairman of the Judiciary Committee is free to go to court if he feels one of those exceptions is applicable. The, the right is yours to ask for these the right exceptions. Is, well, uh, why do you say the right is mine? Because you are the exercising authority under 6E. Yeah, but I think if the chairman believes that he's entitled to receive it, he can move the court for it. Well, I'll, I'll come back to this. It's your right to ask. So I'm asking what is your intention? My intention is not to ask for it at this stage. I mean, if, if the chairman uh, has a good uh, explanation of, of why 6E does not apply and his need for the information, I'm willing to listen to that. As I say, my first uh, agenda item here is to get the, pu the public report out, what can be gotten out publicly. That's going to be within a week. So. My time's I will discuss, up. I'll, I'll come back. I'll, dis I'll discuss these issues in greater detail after that occurs. Ms. Lawrence. It's the case. Thank you. Um, when you offered uh, Mr. Mueller the opportunity to um, review or uh, Edit. I'm not. I'm not exactly sure what your characterization was. Of your three and a half page summary of his report, um, and he declined. Did he give you a reason why he declined? I didn't talk to him directly. Were you provided with a reason why the Mueller team did not want uh, to I participate? I don't recall whether I was whether a reason was given. So, so somebody offered to them that um, they could review your summary, make comments. It wasn't a summary. It was a statement of the principal conclusions. It wasn't a summary of the report. Okay. Your three-and-a-half-page letter, um, did you take it that there was no reason given back for their declining to do so? Did I what? Did you take it that there was no reason for them to do so? In other words, did they not tell you in any way, shape, or form, why they declined uh, to participate in reviewing your three and a half I say, page I, letter. I, I don't recall whether that was related to me. My uh, my sense was that he understood that that this was the function of the attorney general. I'm the person to whom the report's given. Okay. You know, I'm listening to you on the Mueller report, um, and here's my problem. Um, you say in your March 24th letter that you are mindful. Um, of the public interest on this matter and that you will release as much of the report as you can consistent with applicable law regulations and department policies. You follow up with a letter of a few days later outlining four categories in which you are evaluating um, redactions. Uh, one of those categories is grand jury related to federal rule of civil proceeds, criminal procedure 6E. The other three are intelligence, ongoing prosecutions, and privacy reputational interests. And I ask you, what is the authority for that? And you track it back to department policies, which do not have the force of law. They do when they're embodied in regulation. The regulation states. triggers back to department policies. Right. Which are, the regulation states that any disclosure has to be in accord with those policies. Do you consider That's that a you regulatory have regulatory mandate. Do you consider that you have the discretion as to how you apply those department policies? I have discretion. Okay. And so we're sitting here, um, from my perspective, um, 
with virtually unlimited discretion for you to redact uh, from that document. And maybe if I trusted my government more, I would be comfortable with that. But since I don't, I'm not comfortable with that. And I'm looking for some way in which your judgment, which is going to be the arbiter, as I understand it, of what the public sees, the arbiter, it's you, ultimately, um, can be overseen. I've suggested to you that under 6E, there are procedures under which you can go to court uh, to ask the court to give you guidance, direction, or an order. Um, I'm not sure whether you will do that or not. Well, I'm, the court is limited to the grounds stated in, in, in 6E. This is correct. Um, but you do have quite a bit of discretion to go to court under 6E if you, if you, if you review it. So that's, that's one category. The other category, obviously, is that there would be some function for Congress to exercise in its oversight responsibility under the Constitution, but I am not clear as I sit here today whether you envision a role for Congress in that oversight. Well, I think I, I sort of addressed that. Um, I, I identified the four categories and the team that includes the special counsel office lawyers are implementing that. Can you? So, can, so, you know, they are the ones redacting what is 6E. Is there They're a, the ones who conducted the investigation. They know what is 6E and what is not 6E. That's why I'm dependent on the special counsel to identify 6E. And the intelligence community will identify the intelligence stuff. You and and the, the lawyers who were prosecuting the cases and the special counsel's office uh, can identify whether there's going to be a conflict between releasing any information and a court order or an ongoing prosecution. And uh, the special counsel's office knows who the peripheral players are that they've said shouldn't be charged. So those are the categories. Does Congress have a role in overseeing your dis decision as to what is and isn't taken out of the, uh, out of the Mueller report? Does, is, is there any circumstances under, any, under which any member of Congress would have full access to all of the Mueller report, period, maybe under conditions, but is there any circumstance you can envision, sir, uh, where Congress, with uh, whatever protective procedures may be in place, would have access to the full report to review it. Yes, I did say here uh, that once that report is, is ready for release, uh, I would not only give it to the chairman of the judiciary committees, but I would talk to them and engage with them about what additional uh, information they feel they require and whether there's a way of accommodating that. As you, I'm They sure have to give you a reason? What if they just want to see the report to satisfy well, themselves of, of your exercise of discretion? Well, it, well, it, it depends. Uh, take, you know, classified information. I can envision... You have an intelligence committee for that. I, I, well, if you let me finish, I was saying I can envision a situation where under appropriate safeguards that information would be shared. I also think there may be under appropriate safeguards a way of people verifying... Uh, that these categories were not abused and that the information is bona fide uh, privacy-related information and so forth. And I'm willing to work with the Judiciary Committees on that. But I'll have to say that until someone shows me a provision in 6E that permits its release, the Congress doesn't get 6E unless there is a provision that permits it. There's plenty of discretion in 6E for you to make that judgment. And where would you find that? Um, judicial proceedings, akin to judicial proceedings, if you want to go there. I'm sorry, I'm really out of time, but there, there are a number of interpretations you can make of 6E that would give you uh, some pretty good discretion to come up to Congress well, under limited circumstances, possibly, uh, to be able to satisfy somebody in Congress who gets to see the entire report and who gets to oversee you.